today is day four as you can see we're starting to get some gunk towards the bottom not too much if you're checking your ammonia every day you should be in check I just finished checking it I'm still pretty much at a zero ppm uh, you can see uh, it's not so bad at the bottom just towards the front wherever the uh, current kind of goes from the air stone <laughs> is where they kind of like start collecting all the uh, like whatever food you're putting so as you can see here remember when you guys see too many in the corner usually you need to tint it I am going to be cleaning a little bit, so uh, I'm not going to tint it now, I'm going to tint it after. Um, they should be swimming kind of freely like these guys over here. You see how these guys are just kind of swimming naturally. Um, but I do want to get most of this gunk on the bottom. Um, so I do have two things set up. I have a just a regular tube airline tube with a rigid airline tubing uh, it's just straight so when I go straight to the bottom I can just kind of sweep it this is just so I don't have to put my hand in the tank to contaminate it more and the other thing is I saw this um, guy on Facebook uh, he's part of this clownfish breeding group that I am uh, Clownfish, it's just called Clownfish Breeding Group. Um, he kind of made this thing where it was like a vacuum on a tubing. So I straightened out a tube, made a curve a little bit. And then what he did was he hot glued it right here to this bottle cap. And he added some type of like mop material. I don't know exactly what it was. I didn't go into too detail. But I like the concept. Um, so basically what I did was I rubber banded the end of a tube. I just put a bottle cap that I cleaned and drilled a hole. And then I put a bunch of rubber band on some floss. That way I can just push it up. And it's just, as you can see, it, uh, the airline tube kind of disappears. Or I can push it a little bit more. So the concept is you're vacuuming the bottom and you're actually cleaning more area and slowly vacuuming. Obviously it's not going to be great if you're going way too fast then you're just going to stir it up. But if you go at a nice slow rate along the tank just kind of like this it does help pick up a lot extra. Uh, but since today is only day four. I don't want to really stress the fish out with too much uh, gunk flying, especially because they're more hungry towards rotifers. Um, I've always felt that if you just do that too much, um, the um, I mean, if you do it too fast when they're young, you know, whatever is on the bottom starts to go back into the water column, and then they could possibly eat it. I never liked that, so I saved this. Um, probably around day five, day six, when it starts to get a lot heavier in the bottom. And again, around day six to day eight, you should be pretty much switching off the rotifers to TDO anyways. So um, you're going to be less tinting and then more focus on cleaning. Um, in my other video, you know, I just did small water changes. Um, it all depends on your ammonia. If your ammonia is fine throughout the, the, the your first couple days, you don't really have to do your first water change until day four or day five maybe. Um, I just wanted to show kind of both aspects. Obviously, um, my tap water has a little bit of ammonia in it even after the RO filter. So I take the precaution of doing it every day. If your ammonia is zero, zero and nobody's dying, then just wait till day three or day four to do a water change. It's no big deal. Just monitor your ammonia. As soon as your ammonia starts to spike and you let it spike, 
that's when you see all the deaths because that causes one death then that causes a few deaths and then you're left with like 10 clownfish because those can actually withstand a little bit of ammonia <clears throat> so you don't want that to happen obviously um, so from here you just pretty much uh, what I'm gonna do is just kinda clean the bottom a little bit and you're kinda gonna see what I'm doing um, I'll probably mount the camera up here Just kind of the heavy areas, like here's a heavy area for the algae. Uh, again, if you don't have that many deaths, you don't have that much going on, you don't have to do this as frequently. Today's day four. Um, so, uh, we're just gonna clean up as much as it comes to the bottom. I just don't, I, I'm pretty picky. I don't like to let the rotifers start to pile up too much on the bottom. Um, because that leads to like a heavy ammonia spike. Um, so, again, I'm just taking out most of the heavy stuff. You won't see a clean, clean bottom until, like, once I got them off water first, for the most part. Okay, so let me mount the camera in a different angle so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Again, um, here's my tube. I'm more focused on the heavy chunks of rots towards the floor. Um, possibly cleaning any dead clowns. watch out for the little guys obviously you don't want to suck anything up and you don't want to stir around too much like I said if you go too fast in this part then that's how you start getting so I went ahead and I uh, vacuumed pretty much as half the floor. Uh, I don't like to go all the way back only because I don't know if there's clownfish swimming towards the back. Um, so as you can see, uh, I started just pretty much just siphoning all of that. Uh, I just didn't want to include that in the video, but you get the gist of it. Just slowly going back and forth, back and forth for probably 20 minutes it took me. Um, so here's your first sign. Uh, you can see all the clowns here in the corner. Um, that just means I need to tint the water because they're all just kind of swimming. Um, they should be swimming freely like these guys. So always remember that to look for. If you just see a bunch of clowns in one corner, it is way, way, way too bright for them. Even though I've got my light angled, it's not even directly, but just always remember that. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare the tank, uh, the water, add my gallon that I pretty much took out, um, the, uh, add some prime to help with the ammonia, um, always, always check your ammonia twice a day if you can, you just don't want to let a little spike just go. Um, I'm going to go ahead and prepare the water, start dripping it in, add some RG. 
and I mean um, I'm sorry not RG Omega and uh, go from there uh, just a little addition I've started to add uh, the Omega and look the same corner now you can see barely any of them which means it's starting to get dark enough for them so just again always keep an eye on that you never want to just go too too bright or let it go clear because then they start swimming along the glass and then they get uh, they basically starve to death so from the beginning of the video you can tell that it was a lot um, not as bright I mean it was pretty bright in here now I've started slowly adding Omega and they're swimming freely more and not in this corner like they were last time so just a little side note on that as you can see now this is becoming kind of hazy you can't really see it um, so I kind of added this little pump it's not connected or anything but it's just to kind of show you like how kind of greenish it is but this is again the best indicator will be yourself you'll be able to tell like hey there's too many clownfish just all along this wall and they're not going anywhere it's too bright So one request I did get was what does TDO look like? So as you can see, this is TDO A. Usually I feed A from day 4 to about day 20, day 21, somewhere in that range. I mean as you can see it's just really really ground up pellets. So again, this is supposed to be the equivalent of brine shrimp. As you can see, it's very, very small. The next one is TDO B1, which now you can notice the uh, pellets are a little bit bigger compared to that guy, uh, where they're super small. And this one, I'm starting to feed around meta, meta to about the first month mark. Uh, as you can see. 14 obviously goes inside of this range so what happens is just like I'm gonna do with this with the rotifers I'm slowly just mixing it in getting them used to the idea of pellet food and then getting uh, till about day 8 or day 9 where I'm gonna completely stop rotifers so at least I'm giving them about 4 days to get used to hey this is food let's eat this at the surface same thing with this one I'm getting it in the middle of these but still adding both that way they can get used to the new size of pellets so then the next size is B2 again noticeably different from this one to that one so as you can see it's just a really fine pellet so it goes super fine to a little bit to almost normal size like you would get uh, I think at the, the nano pellet food about size <coughs> TDO C1 which is a lot bigger small is usually around the one year mark they can handle that but the small is also the ones I give to the normal parents so you can see the size difference pretty much and this is pretty much what I'll be feeding for their year of life same thing here 25 I'm starting to add both of them in here I'm starting to add both of them in here um, this one you can pretty much stay on until it gets to this size because um, it's supposed to be up to a fourth of an inch up to a half of an inch up to three-fourths of an inch up to an inch and then bigger but um, this all again this is the schedule that's been working for me you can adjust it like maybe you just want to feed TDO until this point and then switch off to B1 slowly and then you know closer to the one month mark stuff like that you know um, so it's all up to you so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, as you can see this is so small I can just stick it to my finger so again what I want to do 
is I've got clowns here so what I'm gonna do is just kinda like salt just slowly put it on as you can see some of them are already kinda getting used to it they're curious and just kinda went up to go grab it um, it's kinda hard to see on the camera but it is in there So again, I'm just only adding like a pinch. I don't want to leave too much because obviously they're not really used to it right now. So it's not going to get consumed and then that turns into ammonia. I'm adding my omega right now to tint the water. And uh, pretty much that's it. He should have added rotifers like we did in the beginning of the video. Uh, keep it in check. Um, adding an omega and the first time we're adding TDO so tomorrow uh, will be day five and we'll be able to see like a little bit more TDO um, added um, I only do a water change if I need to at this point now like the ones that should be going past Meta are still alive um, You can start getting, you can now start noticing they're getting some size to them. Before, obviously, they're a lot smaller. So, this is just four days worth, but we're slowly getting there. Soon, we'll get the first head stripe and getting some orange bellies, hopefully, either tomorrow or day six. And uh, that's pretty much it. So, we'll continue with uh, since tomorrow's pretty much nothing um, I'll just add it to this video but if they're orange bellies tomorrow then we'll start to kind of uh, do that as a separate video alright guys today is day five as we can see all our little guys are still going on strong so again, you always want your clowns to be swimming freely like this. You don't want them around the corner or too long. Uh, this is the morning, so I haven't dosed the Omega yet. That's why it's a little bit clearer. So I just wanted to show, you know, the video of them, how they're doing. Um, still no color, but today is day five. So I will be adding TDO when I do Rotifers. So we can see what that looks like today. Uh, it doesn't look like a lot, but there's actually a few, maybe like 200 or more in here. It's just uh, they're all a lot in this corner, which again, I have to dose Omega. Um, so again, checking my ammonia every day, making sure it doesn't go out of whack no matter what I'm still adding prime in with the water uh, this is where I put my omega I mix it and I slowly start to dose it into the tank to make it darker here's my TDO which in the little segment I did you see the different sizes um, so usually what I do is I kind of put it in this cap and I start to sprinkle it but today I'm going to do the rotter first. While I'm doing the rotter first, I'm going to go ahead and um, um, should I do a water change today? Yeah, I might do it. I mean as far as rotter first, it's pretty heavily packed in there. But I still need to get rid of my rotter first. I don't like to let the culture go over two or three days to let it dense up. Um, Again, if you like to do it every day, uh, if you have, if I say you have five gallon, you can do um, every day, but little amounts. Or what I like to start doing now was waiting three days, feeding it every three days in Rotifers, because then you put a lot, let it dense up, and then the Omega should be feeding them, so they're kind of like reproducing for you 
while feeding the fry. So um, that's kind of a cool thing. Um, again, but if you're comfortable with doing your rod furs every day, you just gotta monitor it, make sure they have plenty of food. It should look like uh, it, it's always the expression that it look it should look like it's snowing in here, which I can see plenty of rod furs. Um, so again, we're gonna go ahead and just do day five. It's just adding a little bit more TDO than what I did on day four. Um, because again, at this point is when I would be feeding them uh, baby brine shrimp. But I don't want to do baby brine shrimp, so I do TDOA just to avoid uh, the sudden infant or sudden uh, fright syndrome. And just having dead brine everywhere pretty much it avoids a lot of that. So I'm um, going to decide if I'm going to do a little water change today. Uh, not too big maybe and then uh, just putting this stuff in and uh, that's pretty much it for day five and then again always monitor your green level because with this amount of rotter first the it's going to deplete really fast so usually I'm adding omega twice a day just because um, the amount of rotter first in here and um that's pretty much it. So until we get to meta, which is when you'll see that uh, they're pretty much off the rocks and just on TDO, it's just going to be pretty much the same thing. Just uh, maybe look at the bottom, see if you need a big um, water change with if your ammonia is high or starting to build up. Never let it go high. Um, and just, uh, you know, bottom to the bottom for a little either chunks of uh, rotifers or algae or as you can see like you can see right in the middle is kind of like where I stopped siphoning in yesterday so uh, you know just here's where uh, it starts to get crucial because your post meta you want your fish to be as healthy as possible going into meta that way you don't lose a lot of them during the transition from fry to juvenile so uh, as long as you keep up with your water for the first week to nine days your fish should be fine going through meta like you shouldn't have this issue um, you know when I first started I'd only at this point I'd only have like five to ten um, <coughs> excuse me what I just figured was I was just getting lazy and not checking the ammonia and then the first day the ammonia would just spike pretty much and um, that happens a lot I got frustrated I pretty much almost gave up and then I just kept um, I have a little notebook I write everything down now uh, days that they're ha uh, laid, days that they're hatching, making sure I double fed the clowns, making sure I double check the ammonia, all that stuff. Um, so it is good to write everything down for the first couple times. Um, I mean, I still do it, and I've been doing this almost like a year, and I still write everything down. Um, so just, you know, don't give up. It is going to get frustrating. Yeah, at one point you're just gonna say, you know, I'm done, I don't wanna do it, I'm wasting so much money, and I'm not getting anything out of it. More than likely, it's just because you're not putting the time into it. I thought, oh, just let them hatch, I'll feed them once a day, don't watch anything, and that's it. No, like, I'm here two, three times a day, checking ammonia, checking, pr uh, adding prime. I add so much prime to this tank, it's ridiculous, just to make sure the ammonia does not go up. I add the uh, Chloromax powder, which is this powder, which helps with ammonia. I add a fourth of a teaspoon to this tank uh, every other day. Um, I'm squeaking the bottom to prevent any like buildup of dead rotifers and dead fish build up in here so it is, it is tedious but it's rewarding 
So uh, my only message to people trying to do this is don't give up. Just find what works for you. What I do may not work for you, but at least it's giving you a start to say, okay, well, at day four, they all died. What did I do at day four? I did a water change. Maybe I did it too fast. Maybe I didn't drip enough. I mean, the fa the drip was too fast. Stuff like that. Just uh, write everything down for your first couple times. It does help. Um, from past experience, like I can I can go back to that day and say, well, why did that? What did I do differently this day that I normally don't? Okay, well, I did this, and then the next time, all right, don't do it and see what happens. So it's all like that. Um, so again, um, day six, seven, eight, nine, I'm pretty much just gonna be doing the same thing as today. Um, adding TDO every day. Um, making sure the bottom is clean, making sure my ammonia is not high, making sure the water levels are fine, making sure, um, sometimes it attracts like little flies and stuff, so don't like leave any bugs in here, that's kind of like an obvious, and, um, from there it would be until post, until meta, and then we'll see what they look at meta. Today's day six. Not much going on today. Just gonna clean the bottom a little bit. Um, the tank is getting a little bit foamy. When it starts to get foamy, uh, usually you're getting too much, you know, surface skimming pretty much is happening uh, when you have an airline. So that just tells me I need to start focusing on a water changes more frequently. Um, I didn't do one yesterday. Um, I did one the day before, so in two days, it pretty much starts getting all gunky. Um, but as long as you check your, uh, you know, everybody's alive, everybody's happy. As long as everybody's pretty much good, and they're starting to darken up. As you can see, now they're getting kind of black. Before they just had like uh, silver and silver bellies. Now they're getting some color to them. Here. So, just gonna do a little water change. Put maybe about a gallon and a half out, clean this bottom, and uh, let's see if I can mount this. As you can see, I'm just simply going back and forth, I'm not trying to stir up the uh, water too much, I don't want to cause too much ammonia spike, so I'm just literally going back and forth until I start scraping the bottom, because remember now, I'm not going to tint as much because it's getting closer to day eight, day nine. Um, so what I'm gonna mostly be doing now is just, um, it looks like there's still tons of rotifers, so I don't really have to add more. Um, the great thing about rotifers is if you put a dense enough culture in there, sometimes it'll start breeding on its own in there. Um, so that's what it looks like it's happened to me. So, because I haven't put rotifers in for maybe two days already, and it still looks like the same density as before. So, 
I'm gonna probably lay off the rotter first for a little bit just start slowly adding TDO more and more more frequently and uh, hopefully just get them off rots completely and we can pretty much stop tinting the tank in a little bit a few more days But as you can see, I'm just collecting all this dirt down here with the tubing. And I'm just going to keep doing this back and forth. Add my water, check my levels, and I'm pretty much done with day six. Just going to keep adding more and more. Um, again more and more TDO again I'm not going crazy with it but I'm just sprinkling it enough to where I hope they start to start noticing okay this is food that way by day by metamorphosis they're almost completely off the rots so uh, pretty much gonna end the day here just showing you this little thing tubing, me cleaning the bottom floor, um, me taking out, I mean you, you already know how I take out the water and mix my water and slowly drip it so I don't need to show that again but here's just the idea of me cleaning the bottom and uh, pretty much until tomorrow day seven Today is day seven. Um, nothing really going on today. Ammonia's fine. Uh, the bottom's still clean from yesterday. Uh, bubbles are fine. Gonna start adding a little bit of TDO again, just to kind of help. Gonna add a little bit, sprinkle. Don't want to add too much if they're not really eating. Uh, no water change needed today. Rots are still good in check. Um, so, pretty much day seven is pretty easy for me. You know, all little guys starting to get a little bit bigger. Uh, they're starting to get a little bit darker color to them. As you can see, just got a pretty much dose. Omega today. Uh, again, I've been dosing it twice a day. I add prime to it, omega, and a little bit of water, just kind of dilute it. I put it in this corner so it's not directly over them. And that's uh, pretty much it for today. No water change needed. Again, just adding TDO. Rots are still heavily in there, so no need to add more rots. Um, everything looks fine. Everything's testing out fine. So until day 8 tomorrow. Today is day 8. Um, no significant difference. Um, just continuing to add a little bit of TDO. Gonna start adding it three times a day, but just small sprinkles. Just to kind of, again, get the idea. Hey, this is your normal food. Get them off rots. Um, nothing. I'm gonna do a water change today. Um, nothing's wrong with the tank, but I just. I'm slowly starting to get off the Omega. Just not as heavy as before. Because as you can see, there's almost no Omega. It's still kind of green, but not as green as it usually is and they're swimming in the middle fine and freely nothing's really bothering them also to the less omega you put the rots 
start to kind of die out. So that's something also to, to be aware of. You don't want to start causing ammonia spikes. So um, just going to clean the floor a little bit. As you can see, it needs not that much cleaning because I've been... I did a water change two days ago um, and I haven't added rots since because they're just basically reproducing in there with them so um, just gonna pretty much uh, do a little small water change start adding again TDO uh, A get them off the rots until tomorrow day 9 So today is nine days post hatch. As you can see, we're getting some size to them. Um, this is the point where you might start running into ammonia problems. And no matter how many water changes, no matter how many, how much prime you're putting, or ammonia stopper, Chloramax, anything, you still get ammonia. So this is probably the point where they're more than enough capable of handling a sponge filter. A sponge filter will help absorb um, any pretty much film plus uh, buildup of ammonia in the sponge. So um, it is okay to start adding it at this point. So what we're going to do here is uh, you want to get what's called a seasoned sponge. A seasoned sponge meaning it's not a brand new sponge it's been in water it has some type of bacteria in there to allow the uh, the ammonia and uh, bacteria to build up faster within the sponge so today what we're just gonna do is just uh, add the sponge start adding TDO again and uh, pretty much that's it um, again so at this point if you start running into ammonia and you just can't keep it down for me it's day around here some people it's like day six day seven um, you can start adding a sponge filter to help again um, so that's what we're gonna do today so we went ahead and added the sponge filter as you can see it's not blowing super hard but it's going to start helping with the ammonia. Again, I'm at a point where no matter how much prime I'm putting, it's just not helping. So that just means they're ready for some type of biological filtration to help them get through meta. So I'm just going to keep adjusting this, but I think I'm pretty much at where I like to be. Um, I put the original air pump a little bit lower that way it's not too much for them to handle just kind of like what they had before and um, so again original hose is still there but it's not as strong this is probably where the same adjustment as it was before and um, we're just gonna start feeding TDO and um, go from there maybe I'll tint it a little bit because there are a lot in that corner still but I won't be tinting as much because now it's already day 9 uh, there pretty much should be off any little you know rots that are still in here or like the last of it and uh, we're just going to be focusing on feeding TDO mostly so As you can see, I'm going to get some TDO. Just like the sprinkles were. Start slowly tapping it in. Not too much. Remember, a little bit goes a long way because it's really, really, really fine. As you can see, that covers most of the 
probably one fourth of the top, and I only sprinkled about a pinch of, <coughs> like the equivalent of a pinch of salt. So, uh, I am going to start, probably do another water change, just because the sponge filter was added, and then um, we're going to uh, add some prime, and go from there. Again, um, so what's going to be done, just a little, little, little bit of um, Omega, just to tint the water a little bit. Again, I'm not really focusing on tinting anymore, but again, I'm only tinting because I have a lot bunched up in that corner over there. Uh, if you can see, there's a lot bunched up over there, so I do want to... This is why I kind of added this. It's like a little kind of canopy, so to speak. So I don't have to tint as much. Cause there's, this is how they're normally supposed to be. They're swimming freely. But you will have some guys that will always just be in the corner. I don't know, I've seen it with a lot of batches. They just stay in the corner. And as they start to develop, you'll just see them always in the corner. Um, it's kind of normal at this point, but again, I just uh, I just like to double check by uh, tinting it. But again, at this point, you shouldn't really be tinting as much, as well as um, focusing more on the water quality. Water quality is what causes mist bars. So if you start seeing mist bars in your clowns, then your water wasn't good enough for that clown, and it wasn't efficiently growing well so you know always look out for mist bars because this point at this point unless you're well no because um mist bars aren't a genetic thing it's more of a, a you know water quality thing um so i wasn't i won't say like if you're looking to breed mist bars you know it's not really the best way but just because of the water quality means that they're bad on them um, but at this point everything that you've been working up to is when you'll start to see them go through meta which they'll get their first little head stripe so everything you've been working to towards this point is what makes them stronger through meta if you had poor water quality not enough food not enough you know uh, nutrients for them too much film, too much bacteria, too much ammonia, all that stuff is considered when they're going through meta. Um, you know, the better you kept the water, the better you kept the, um, you know, the, the rotifers in there in check, enough food for them, then most likely all of them will survive meta. But if you did poorly to this point, then you'll see it when they go through meta because that's their um, most point I would say to lose I would say day hatch night and meta transition are your two hardest losses if you don't do it well um, you'll notice that through meta some of them just can't handle it um, again water quality and food and nutrients and everything up to this point helps them go past it and then from a fry into a juvenile because once they do the meta, you'll start swim, seeing them swim like a, you know, like a normal clownfish like that, versus just kind of back and forward like a fry. So at some time this week, they should be going through meta, and um, uh, you'll see them transition basically from the the way they swim is the the most obvious kind of way and I'll receive the first head strike. All right, so this is, I'll conclude this video on day nine. Again, all we did was added the sponge filter. Gonna check the water, adjust whatever I need to. Uh, check your ammonias, if it's fine. Because you added the sponge filter a few days before, then you're good. Just keep feeding them to uh, three, four times a day in small sprinkles. Um, if you're battling ammonia, do a water change, add a sponge filter. Um, if you're still 
Uh, you shouldn't be needing that many rots at this point. Again, whatever is just left in here is what's surviving. Sorry, I got cut off. Uh, but yeah, so whatever is in here is what's surviving off the Omega pretty much. Um, again, I haven't added Rotifer since probably day 6 or 7, and we're already on day 9. Um, so, just be aware of your your levels, and uh, adjust what you need to adjust, and hopefully we'll go through meta either sometime tomorrow, or sometime this week, or the next video. Alright, thanks. Also, too, I uh, did realize uh, I finally got 200 subscribers. Uh, I want to thank everybody for subscribing and watching my videos. Uh, I did this to help. I never thought, you know, I would get... I know 200 subscribers isn't a lot, but it's the start of something. You know, I never thought starting this channel I would get even... 20. Um, you know, I thought my videos would just get overlooked, but it was just there to be there. But I do want to thank all you guys for all your support, and um, hopefully you like my videos or see if I answer any questions in your the videos that I didn't address. Um, and again, we'll just keep going until. Um, I mean, usually I would say about the one month mark you're pretty much golden but um we'll just keep doing the video and again they'll be shorter and shorter just because once you get to a certain point it's all pretty much just normal saltwater fish care as long as you're doing your maintenance watching everybody feeding everybody watching your levels it's pretty much cake from here um and so again, I just really want to thank everyone for uh, taking the time to subscribe and like and watch my videos. Uh, recommend it to your friends if they're breeding. Recommend it to whoever you know you know that might be interested. Uh, I do it more just to help, and any little information can help anybody. I mean, at one point I was just ready to give up, like. I couldn't keep more than five alive, um, like, and sometimes I would only get one out of a whole batch, and I just couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. And um, at least this might be a starting point for somebody, and this might open their eyes to something. Oh, let me try that. Okay, well, they started dying around day four. What did I do different around day four? You know, write everything down, like I said in the previous days. You write everything down, you know what exactly you did that day and what you can change. Maybe your salinity was a little bit too high, maybe your temperature was off, maybe you added too much of this, or maybe you didn't add enough rotifers, or... So always write everything down. But again, uh, I'm going to conclude day 9 with just big thank you to you guys. And that's it.